You are now tuning into Out the Box Radio Show. Entertainment at its best. Hot topics, games, and unforgettable interviews. Welcome to the show. Right now on Vacation Creation, it's a Caribbean adventure. As a deserving young man and the best friend who has always been there for him, come together to celebrate a new chapter in life. It's not about just helping other people, it's about helping a child in need, and that's going to be my next journey in life. We'll soar to new heights. So taking that first step out, it was like taking a leap of faith. Go, go Justin! Justin. Go, go Tommy! And plunge into the deep blue sea to give these two best friends a trip they will never forget. Looking down into the water was like a whole nother world. And it's all coming up right now on Vacation Creation. We're so glad to have you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you. Now, Justin, we saw you guys' video, and you were so involved in the community in so many different ways. How'd that come about? Yeah, well, I've honestly been very active in my community since I was and I've always wanted to have like a helping hand. Um, so when I was younger, I started volunteering a lot at different charities, different organizations to kind of get my feet wet and see how it feels to help people. When you help people and you're successful at it, you can see their outcome. You can see what you've done to help them. And that feeling is what sticks with me every time. Like he will go like to the end of the earth to help anybody. And it doesn't really matter you know, who you are if he sees that you need that help. That's what exactly he's going to do. Well, you're about to be a big role model for one specific person. You're about to become a father, right? I am. Yes. The most exciting part of my life right now, absolutely. It's not about just helping other people. It's about helping a child in need. And that's going to be my next journey in life with this adoption. We are live. Out the Box Radio Show. What's First going of on? all, let me get his name right. This gentleman to my left, uh -huh. your right, is Maher. Ahmed. Why'd you have to point at the hair, though? Because that's the only way I remember your name. <laughs> I've been calling him Mahir for about a, a year. year. Oh, that a rhymes, though. Um, so, Mahir Ahmed is here with us today. Um, he's actually my special guest. He's going to be our interviewing with us on Out the Box Radio Show in just a little bit of time. But before we get into the interview, I want to talk about the clip that we just showed. Yes. Um, Vacation creation. So on my show, on our show, um, my co-hosts are going to be here next week. Um, Out the Box Radio Show, we talk a lot about what happens behind the scenes with reality television and production in general. Yep. I don't know if you knew that. I know you've seen some episodes. Mm -hmm. um, let's get right into it because okay. I've been waiting to showcase this conversation itself for yeah. about eight months. I love it. I was so excited when you went on that show and I saw those clips. I was like, ooh, I have a famous friend. <laughs> It was on ABC. It was not famous, honey. Okay, so let me ask you, aside from the clip that you just saw, what was your favorite part of the episode? Uh, I loved the conversation about when you were going to adopt a kid. Oh, you did. Yeah. The emotional side. Yeah. I love the emotional scenes. You yeah. Always bring, you always bring the tears out of I me. do. But you know what's <laughs> you crazy, though, do. is they actually left out the part where I really did start bawling my really? eyes out. Well, that's what they do. That's yeah. one sucky thing about reality TV is that... There's a 40-minute scene, and you get to see two minutes of it. Right. You know? And they usually cut out the best parts. Exactly. I was so pissed. Yeah. So I will say this, because I do have friends who are in production for that show, and they do watch um, Out the Box Radio Show. So I'm not going to say nothing bad about the production. The crew was amazing. We had a lot of fun. But let me just be honest. I'm going to be real. And y'all know me to be real. So I'm not going to hold nothing back. Mm -hmm. um, it was some bullshit. <laughs> Because we filmed for six days on the cruise. This is my first time going on a cruise. Mind you, I didn't pay anything, obviously. They paid for my ticket. They paid for my passport because I didn't have a passport. They paid for all that, which was like, ooh, amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So I go on this six-day cruise, and I get to enjoy um, maybe about two hours of it myself. Of my time. Like, of my time. Because camera crew was around the whole time? Absolutely. Like so, yes. When you're filming, and as you know, because my hair is oh, actually yeah. a producer. So, yep. when you're filming, you film nonstop for 12 to 14 hours sometimes. And, of course, they're going to edit it down to, like, five minutes of footage. Right. If you're lucky for each scene, which is absolutely insane. So, I'm trying to enjoy myself with my best friend on this cruise, um, who you guys saw in the clip. And... Literally, the camera people and the producers are knocking on our door mm -hmm. every morning at 6 o'clock on our cabin, on our door, waking us up to get ready. And you know I take a long time to get ready. <laughs> yes, you do. 
don't wake me up and say let's start filming, bitch. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna jump in the ocean and leave your ass behind. I'm not filming nothing until I get my face ready, my hair ready, and my clothes, and my outfit, everything. I'm not doing it. Well, that's the one sucky thing is that like you're you want to enjoy this whole cruise, right. but it's kind of like you're working. Right. You know? It is absolutely. You get to enjoy probably ha not even half of that experience. Right. None of it. And so I will say, uh, I mean. I didn't get a chance to really, I wanted to do a blog about it, but I never got a chance to because I didn't want to bash anybody on the series. Mm -hmm. But I will say two things. One, I planned my outfits accordingly because the producer <laughs> told me to bring at least two outfits for every day. So I brought more. I brought about 12 outfits total. And um, 12 or 13. And I purposely went out and bought about two or three hundred dollars worth of new clothes because I was so excited to wear them. Oh, Obviously, you know on TV you can't wear brands. Like I couldn't wear this. I couldn't wear this. I got you. I understand. I know. I'm not stupid. Okay, so I packed it accordingly. I get there. I pick out all my clothes and lay them out in the closet. You know, based on the day because I'm very organized. Um, and I got to wear one of my outfits that I brought. Did you have a bunch of patterns on there? Or something? No. Or they that, were just picky? They were very picky because they were like, oh, this shows too much. I have tattoos. So they're like, oh, this shows too much of your tattoos. It's an ABC family-friendly show. And I'm like, well, blur them out. Like My tattoo it, doesn't say fuck you. Right. You're on a cruise ship with 90-degree weather and the sun's beaming on your face. Right. And you're expecting me to wear a long button-up shirt? It's a no for me. Well, I couldn't say no because I was on contract. <laughs> but the bad part about it was, on, on some real, was like... I didn't have enough clothes to wear, so I had to wear the producer's clothes. The producer weighs about 200 more pounds than I do. Dead. So for those of you who've seen the show, and now for those of you who haven't, probably want to go watch my outfits, because like, that's not my style. I'll <laughs> let y'all know now that's not my style. So if you see me in those crazy outfits, that's not my clothes. You will not find them in my closet. Um, that makes they, sense now, thinking, looking back. The one scene where I had to do like the high rope obstacle course or something and fake like I was scared of heights when I really wasn't. Um, I am. I wore this big ass blue shirt that would look like I was homeless. I legit looked like a homeless person stepped on the ship. And it was the producer shirt, and it was very stretched out because he wore it for three days in a row. Who knows if he washed it. In the same it. shirt? In the same shirt. Because production crew, they don't really care what they wear. They're not on camera. They're behind them. But I was pissed because it was so worn, and it smelled a little bit like sweat. So I was like, yo, your sweat's mixing with my sweat, and I'm not in a good mood. So oh, what? so he was sweating like a hoe in church. Absolutely. That's disgusting. Absolutely. He was very hoish with his sweat. <laughs> and what made me pissed was that they wanted to film this one scene for four hours, which was directly under the sun on the very top of the ship, the highest level possible. So we burning like some damn chicken up there. <laughs> and I got so mad when I had to put his clothes on that yeah. I faked like I was sick. I would and do the same. And they're like, do you need a moment to yourself? I said, absolutely. Yep. I'm going to throw up on camera. Give mm -hmm. me a moment. So they're eating. They took a break. They decided to eat their food. I went downstairs, but I didn't realize I was still mic'd up. So I, I went downstairs by myself, shit. and I was on my phone talking Mad shit. shit. I was like, I can't believe I'm fucking wearing the producer's yeah, clothes. I just act like I was sick to mm -hmm. get off the scene. Don't ever make that mistake. They when you're heard mic'd up, everything. Don't say anything you don't want to be heard. Yes. Because they will capture everything. Even if you're whispering and you think nobody else Ooh. can hear you, they hear it. Well, they sent my best friend down because he was eating upstairs with them. Mm -hmm. They sent him downstairs. And what they told him to do was to come get me, but talk to me a little bit first to see how I was feeling. They mm -hmm. knew I was feeling fine because they yeah. heard me. So he came downstairs and he was whispering. He was like... Up. Yeah. Like he was pointing to my shirt, and I was like, What? My nipples? Like, what's wrong? <laughs> I thought maybe the shirt was like hanging down because it's baggy. And he was like, No, you're Mike. And I was like, Oh. And I was like, Yes, I'm feeling fine now. Like, I was. <laughs> anyway, I was so pissed. So, out of all this, did you at least get paid a decent amount? Did you get a stipend? Um, because I most reality stipend. shows do. Okay. Was and, it I, and I took my best friends and I told him that we didn't get paid anything. Ooh, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. Um, I don't owe you anything, though, because you, you know, you still owe me a lot. Um, <laughs> And he tagged along on a free trip. He got a free passport too. So, oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah, he got a free passport and the free. Okay. You know, the room was very nice. So, yeah. I'm sure, and everything was paid for the whole time. Whatever yeah. we wanted, I want that. I want this. I want. We got treated like royalty. Right. It was just annoying that we were filming for every you know all day long. Yeah. Um, no, absolutely. We had a, we had a good time when we were able to. Like mm -hmm. we went to the clubs at nights on the ship, and we weren't filming like around midnight. But it was just a mess. I, what I will say is, I would never do that again. Um, <laughs> That just was, that show? No, well, that was my or just third. Like that was my general. third reality show that I've done, documentary series that I've done. Um, Famous y'all. 
I still want to do more, of course, absolutely. Duh. Like, who doesn't want to do more? But I would never do. I would never sign up for a show where I'm trying to enjoy myself, and I know that there's going to be filming mm-hmm. nonstop, and I can't enjoy myself. Yeah. Never, ever, ever again. So, what scene of the show? Because my hair actually watched it. What scene of the show was probably like your haha moment? Because I look crazy oh. in all this. Oh, the haha moment was when you came out of the water after diving, and your oh. hair. You looked like a cockatoo what? with your oh. hair. <laughs> Yo, I did the way of parakeet. If your hair is like I the wrong way, way I love you, but when your hair is the wrong way, you look like so funny. And y'all know that was my haha moment. You know white people. Y'all know white people, obviously. Hello. <laughs> y'all know white people, right? So we have very soft hair. So the wind blows the wrong way and poof, it's all out of whack. That's why His hair was sticking up like this. It, half of it Straight was wet line. down, half of it was sticking up. <laughs> so I think half of it was trying to get its air time, the other half was sleep. Mm-hmm. But my problem was um, we didn't have time to like fix it. I wanted a mirror. Like, let me see a mirror. Right. And it's funny. This is the last thing I'm going to mention about this part. But it's funny because when we filmed the scene of us jumping into the water, diving for the, the seashells or the conch, whatever they call it, seashells, um, I can't swim. So I had to have them go down and get it for me. And I looked like I went down and got it myself. And I was like, ooh, I got one. No, I didn't. They went down and got it for me because I can't, I can't swim, y'all. Of course. Um, <laughs> but then we went ashore to where the stingrays were. And the stingrays were right around where you walk onto the actual beach. So mm-hmm. they're within like your kneecap level. Right. But they wanted us to make it look like we just swam to the shore. So they made us get in the water all the way down and come up out of the water like Ariel of Little Mermaid. Yeah. We had to come up out of the water and act like we just swam. Swam to shore, knowing I can't swim. First of all, so obviously, that oh, looks, they were trying to kill you. I don't know. It was it was very fun, but I definitely recommend if you guys haven't seen it yet, please look up Vacation Creation. Um, it was a very emotional show. There were some tear moments, and I enjoyed it. I just didn't enjoy the production side of it, um, which but it was we're actually a very good episode though. Well, well, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're actually getting ready to talk a lot about production because that was just a little teaser for y'all. We got more teasers coming up in just a minute. Yeah, we um, do. My hair has actually been a producer for who knows how long. See, he said my name wrong again. No, my hair. <laughs> my hair. Mo. It's okay. You can call me Mo. <laughs> Mo. Still love you. Has been a producer for a long time. I've known him for a little over a year. Um, and we're going to talk about the project that we're working on right now, but also some other things that he's got going on in his own life that I don't even know about because he's a little, you know, standoffer sometimes. He puts the wall up and I don't know what's going on with him. I'm just playing. He's actually, Me? he's really open like a book. I am. Um, At least absolutely. with y'all on the he show. Is. He's, he's a very good person and I enjoy working with him thoroughly. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, before we get started though, we definitely want to take this opportunity to show you all an extended um, teaser, if you will, of the upcoming show, Face the Music. Yes. So sit back, relax, enjoy it. This is just a brief glimpse of the new reality show, Face the Music. Enjoy. I've been dating Vaughn since my sophomore year of high school, and I'm 24 years old now, so it's been eight, nine years. This past year has been really difficult for us, though. We had a bunch of ups and downs. We're broken up for a couple of months, so lately it's just been trying to mend those fences and work on things. I'm looking you straight in your face. The camera's in off. Whatever the f- you're talking about, if I don't know what you're talking about, how is that relevant to me? Okay, who do you think I talked to on Friday? I have no clue. I talked to Are you serious right now? This is why we haven't talked in a couple of weeks, and this is the first I'm hearing about it. This must be a joke. You're getting so, caught up for, I don't know, what so the f- did that doing? situation come about? Please tell me. Because another person reached out to me, so then I reached out to her. A and different I'm not person gonna, or I'm, the same person? I don't person. know. It was a different profile. So you reached out to her? So, yes, I did. Did she respond? I, yes, she did. What she said? Tell me what she, she said. She still claims that she did f- Tony's one of my really good friends. I've known him for years, and I'm meeting up with him and his boyfriend, Nathan. I haven't talked to him in a long time, so we have, like, a lot to catch up on. Plus, we went through, like, a really big rough patch, so it's just, like, we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> so, what's been going on since the last time I saw you? My life isn't 
insane, like dead ass, dead ass. I left Randy's house. She kind of kicked me out. When? Like. Cause I mean, we were just there like a month ago. Like a week ago. Like you're really gonna do this to me when my, when my dad just died? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, I was gonna ask you, how's it feel to like move back into the house? It's sad as shit. I still haven't, I don't think I've still come to terms with his death, honestly. It's really upsetting. Like no one deserves to lose a parent, especially this young. I'm 23. When like you're a young adult, you never think about your parents dying. That's not something that you think about because you just think like your parents are gonna live forever. Like they got all the superhero powers and strength, like they're gonna live forever. But the sad reality is like they're not. And that's not something I thought I would have to think about at 23. It's hard. I got you on my mind, baby. It's not fair. Like I had to watch him die. I had to watch him die. The sadness now, it comes in waves. I'll see like a grandfather with his granddaughter and I'm like, wow, my kids will never get to experience that because my dad's not no longer here. Or like I whenever I think about like me getting married, I just tear I get teared up. Because my dad's not gonna walk me down the aisle. It just got real quiet for a second because I was a little bit in my emotions. <laughs> yeah. Like that watching that. emotional. Yeah. I mean, and as a, and as a producer, I mean, you let me know how yeah. is it when you're actually responsible because my hair, my hair, my hair. Mo is a, I'm never gonna get it right is a also camera operator in his mm -hmm. own productions because he has a certain eye for things that he wants to get. Maybe he doesn't trust everyone to operate a camera. I don't know. I'm the same way though. But I gave you. I, yeah, he did. I, I allowed you to do it for and the you first did a time job. last and weekend. And we just point out there that he's a part of this too. I made him a co-producer because at first he just started helping out. But once I realized how organized and he helps me so much, I was just like, okay, you're co-producer. I need your help so bad. <laughs> well, I have, we know we both have a passion for it. Yeah, and I think absolutely. as you can see, the work that's put into it, the stories themselves are. A little bit of drama, a little bit emotional. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you, before we get into the entire series of the clips we just saw for Face the Music, I want to talk to you a little bit about, let's step back a few steps, okay. about production and being a producer yeah. and an editor and a creator and everything. Like You are all of the above. You wear so yeah. many hats. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. And I just want to know, like, how did you get into that? When, when did you start, honestly? So I started off, I did not know what I wanted to do after mm -hmm. high school at all. And then one day I just saw like a movie and I was like, ooh, this is really cool. I'm pretty sure I could film that. So I started doing like music videos for local artists around the mm -hmm. area. And then I started watching a lot of reality TV. And I noticed, I was like, okay, what's going on behind the scenes? Because this jumps to this and I don't get it. And I was like, how did they pick up the audio? I was in, like asking myself all these questions. Right. And I was so curious about right. everything that went on behind the scenes. And then I thought to myself, I was like, wait, I'm pretty sure like once I was like 20, 21, I was like, I definitely want to eventually do my own reality show. Mm -hmm. And I want to be on reality TV. I signed up for the real world and I got to like round five of casting, which was really cool. Yep. So I want to do it all. I want to be on the camera sometimes. I want to be behind the camera. I want right. to be the editor. The one thing I don't like, audio. But I grew to understand that now because Devonte helped me out, which is oh, my gotcha. audio guy okay, that yeah. helps out. Yeah. yeah, he's my best friend. So, yeah, yeah. that's how I started. Um, okay, it's it's been a long journey. So this well, is my first has. series that I've actually worked on. Yes, and the 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 difference with what you'll see with this series amongst others, in my eyes, is alone in the editing. The editing is done so tastefully and so well. Well, thank you. It no, I mean it is a reality <laughs> show, but it actually looks like a reality show because it is. You, know, you, you come across these other series mm -hmm. and you have all these people who are trying web series and all these people who are trying right. these quote unquote reality shows and they're either flopping, they're not working, yeah. or they look like crap. Well, not only that, but I also think that a lot of series now, a lot of the shows on TV are too scripted and that's what mm -hmm. I don't like about reality TV. I mean, I love shows on TV, but... I notice that so much of it is scripted, right. and that's what so I love to say that is completely yeah. different about our show, is that, you know, there are times where we have to script stuff, like somebody walking in the door, right. but this drama that happens, we're not relying on people punching each other in the face. That's right. what a lot of people, that's what a lot of TV networks right. are going for, because I guess maybe that's what their audience wants. Yeah. The younger the audience younger crowd. is looking yeah. just for fights. But hopefully we're getting a more mature audience that likes what we're showing, showcasing, which is the, the stuff that's going on with the cast members' lives and right. what's going on with them personally. And that's more interesting to me. Well, and what I will add to this is what you just mentioned, just to piggyback off of you, 
Um, that is a big difference of the show is you have a little bit of drama sprinkled in, as you see right. in a part of the clip that we just showed. You have that, and you have more that you haven't actually seen that we just filmed last weekend. Oh, yeah. Um, which is insane. Weekend. We'll talk a little bit about that <laughs> in, in a few minutes. But I, what I will say is, in my mind, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Mo, mm -hmm. the way this series has transformed is it is very much like a documentary, docu-series almost, right. because you're following the lives of these artists, yes. and they all have something emotional that they went through. Yeah. Whether it was something in their past life when they were younger, growing up, or there's something current that they've yeah. gone through. And these people are just going through so much like currently also, yeah. and I didn't know about the majority of the stuff that's happening with them or that happened to them yeah. until, until they, they started tell us. the show. Yeah. And yeah. you know, even though we interviewed them, they didn't open up to us as much as they are now. Right. And that's what I love about the people on the show. It's almost made it like to it's not just working with these people. It's became like a family group. And it has, yeah. I mean, the the one thing that I love is that they don't act like I'm their boss or like their right. manager or something. It's this is like fun to us, but at the same time, they open up to me, and not only that, but they have me open up to them, and they ask me questions. They're worried about me sometimes, and I mean, that's what I love about everybody yeah. on the show, and I wouldn't do it with anybody else. Like, I love everybody. No, I, that's part well, of it. I agree with you, and I think that it's, again, it's something that's very unique in itself, and it's going to be something that everyone will be able to see for themselves. Yeah. But I will warn you, please grab a Kleenex box because oh, you are absolutely going to need it. Talking about tears a lot of times yes. behind the scenes, I'm like almost in tears because right. I don't know how to handle that. For one, I'm very emotional of a person, but it's hard when you are literally watching them spill everything out mm -hmm. and you can just see their passion behind it and you're just like, okay, even though I know I have to remain professional because this is a production, you begin to relate to them. You yeah. begin to under, cause we've both been through things. And, and, and that being said there, you know, even though you're part of behind the scenes and you're a co-producer, there was actually a scene that we did a couple of months ago that you were in. Right. And that scene brought tears to my eyes. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I don't want to spoil it before it comes right. out, but it was the first scene that the majority of the cast got together and the three of two cast members and you had a conversation and you guys were just talking about what you had been through and you had said something that I had no idea about. And it's almost like yeah. from the outside looking in, I would think that you're just this perfect guy and that you haven't been through anything. Same with a lot of the other cast yeah. members. But And then you guys start talking about the stuff and I literally started crying while filming that yeah. scene. I had to like walk inside and be like, yeah. oh God. It makes you choke oh God. up. It makes you yeah. choke up for sure. Um, no, absolutely. Because I can relate also. Yeah. yeah. You've definitely been through a lot of stuff. I think that, again, it will be enjoyable for people to watch in the right ways. Yeah. Um, I do want to mention this. I think so, uh, that's why I keep looking at my phone, not to be like disrespectful to anybody, but oh, no, I think yeah. we had someone who was trying to call in. <laughs> okay. She just tried to call my cell phone as well. So, um, you want us to call? We can, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you're that's watching, cool. I think I know who it I is trying to call in. I think I know who it is too. Um, but absolutely. But what I will say as well is, you know, I, I just want to know, because I don't get a chance to ask you that much, uh -huh. but what is your favorite part of the show? I love being able to edit the show and when I just show somebody a preview, the feedback that I get, it pushes me so much harder to do better yeah. and to keep going because there are times where I doubt myself and then I'm like, you know what, maybe my content isn't that great. So when I put it out there and just show it to one person and the text messages that I get or the right. DMs that I get and they're like, yo, this is fire, like keep going. Right. And it, it just makes me so happy and I'm like, I'm, this is what I'm meant to do. Yeah. So that's my favorite part. Okay, well that makes sense. And, and working with you guys, everybody on the cast. Seriously, I, I love everybody on the cast. I do too. It's like you said, it's very much like a family friendly yeah. environment. I think we have the caller on the line now. Ooh. Is this is this our one of our cast members or no? Absolutely. I hope I'm a guest member. <laughs> it's, it's Matt. It's so. Is this Matt? <laughs> It is wait, Lord wait, Farquaad. Wait, so, wait, so, oh, so somebody actually, somebody actually knows me. Then what's going on, Matt? This is my friend, uh, Matt. This is uh, Matt. Okay, yeah. okay, Matt. Well, I'm sure you're calling to ask Mo a question and not me because you probably have no idea who I am. But what is your question for Mo while he's here with us today? Um, while he's there with you guys today, I want to know what he's doing after the show. After the show, what am I doing? Yeah, like after like the after. series. Okay, I have yeah, a couple yeah, exactly. things planned after the series. I actually have um, a short film series that I want to start doing, and I just need to find someone that help to help me write the script for that because I'm awful at writing scripts. But I really want to start that next, and then once we see how successful this show ends up being, Face the Music, if it goes as well as I want it to, I really want to do another reality show. 
that I already know the concept of, yeah. and that's just going to need funding. So yeah. um, if all goes well, that's next, those two projects, and much more hey, to come. Cool. And much, much more to come. come. Yeah. Much more to I come. Hope so. Well, you've been a friend, Matt, of of Mo for a while now. So, have you? I mean, I'm assuming you make it oh, seem like. Oh, I've known like him it. like all my life. Yeah. Okay, so how Thank have you, you seen you. as far as his like creativity and passion for production and, and television? Is it is it crazy? Is it like a fire underneath his ass? Because I'm sure it is. <laughs> it's like it's like I don't know how he's not in Hollywood yet. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, no, I can because like, he's like really good. Uh, he's with my sister, and the second that my sister talks to somebody new or like meets up with one of her friends she's like you have to watch Maher's videos like you have to <laughs> show him like your music video show him the sneak peeks right. of your show she's like my number one fan wait what about me what about me what about me oh, yeah. you think uh, your maybe you, number one fan? you can become him. number two maybe but <laughs> she 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 like yeah she hypes me she slices me Oh, well, you, no. you deserve yeah. it, man. So much talent. It's like unreal. Oh, thank you, Matt. Stop. You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> okay. it's, not, it's not talent. It's not talent. It's creativity. It is. It is. And thank you have you, a thank, very thank creative you. eye. Yeah. Or else I wouldn't you. have joined forces with you. I'm hey, not gonna you lie. do too. That's why I have you help out. Uh, well, thanks. <laughs> I can be the production bitch, I guess. Um, so I know I'm just playing. Thank, well, you, thank for you for calling, yeah, thank Matt. Thank you, Matt, for calling, and we appreciate the feedback. I'll see yeah, you this absolutely. weekend. All right. I'll see you guys later. All right. Bye. So I want to know, because on the show, we talk a lot about behind the scenes moments, right? Uh -huh. Let's talk a little bit about behind the scenes moments with Face the Music. What is your favorite so far, your favorite or most memorable behind the scenes moment? I don't know if we can consider this behind the scenes, but the reason why I'm saying this is because it was with one of the cast members and you, but it was actually last weekend. And oh, yeah. it was Ooh. once we were done filming a particular scene and we went out to get lunch. It was me, Yolande, and Justin. And while talking, I don't know how this got brought up, but Yolande asked about my sister because one of my sisters passed away last October. Um, she committed suicide. And she was asking me these questions and asking how I was and what I'm going through. And the fact that she was just seeing how I was and was truly worried and just hoping that I was okay and wanted to talk to me about it. It really opened my eyes and it showed that, again, these aren't just, you guys aren't just people right. that are a part of a show and want to work and want to get exposure. This is like a friendship and like a bond. And that's what I really love. Um, right. And I mean, that girl is truly the most selfless person I've ever met. She yeah. is not selfish at all. And she's always worried about other people. And you're, that that's my favorite cast member, I swear. That was actually my uh, next question yeah, is who is her. your... Favorite, and it's hard to say sometimes. You yeah, kind of just it, put it, it right out there for everybody because else. Sorry, everybody's <laughs> everybody on the show is amazing. Yeah, but when it, the fact that she just texts me sometimes and asks me how I am, I mean that's. I mean, I'm kind of like I'm the producer, so I wasn't expecting that. Right. So that's great. I it's love a little that. bit different. No, yeah. it's good that you're able to build those and I, bonds. And I can really, um, I can really connect with her a lot. Okay. Well, I think possibly maybe we have another caller on the line. Caller. Okay. What is your name and where are you calling from? I hear a little static. Is your name Static? <laughs> Caller, hello. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Static, if you don't mind, if you could try to call back in because we cannot hear you right now. But we would love to hear from you. But we would love you. to hear your feedback and questions. So yes. please try to call right back in please while do. we continue the conversation about Yolande because yes. Yolande is actually one of my – I don't like to put a, a pin on a favorite person because I like – like you said, everybody has different qualities yeah, that they bring. absolutely. Um, but I will mention that some people more than others are willing to open up more. Yeah. And when you open up more, you get to know more about them and they're very genuine and they have mm -hmm. a big heart and they're loving and yeah, caring. Yeah, absolutely. And, and some she, people are kind of closed off. On and she show. drops what she's doing at, a, oh. at the drop of a pen. Yeah. Right. Another person called We're going to try this again because Mr. and Mrs. Static that just called. I think we may have <laughs> them back on the line – Caller, are you on with us? You all, you just all static today, Maybe huh? Maybe it's somebody that like passed away because you know that's how it sounds in heaven. Like when someone calls, she was very static. -y. Stop giving me the chills. <laughs> you know I feel spirits. Y'all don't yes, know this, but I, I know, actually, because when we were in the hell, do, hotel can... the other day, you told me that there was a ghost by me. Why would I you wasn't tell lying. Me that? that bitch was right up in my drawers because it was like right, at, right, right through Stay me. Stay in your drawers. Don't get in mine. 
<laughs> it was a very friendly ghost, clearly. Um, no, no, we went to this old, we were picking up one of our cast members, and she was actually um, staying the weekend in a hotel in downtown Baltimore. I don't really know Baltimore that well, even though this is where the studio is right now. There we're like outside the city. Hotel. It was a very old hotel. It was built in like the 1800s. Very historic, very creepy. And when you walked in, you could just feel this aura like it was like, what? Who just died in here? And let me tell y'all, Yolande goes, oh, by the way, if you don't work tomorrow, like if you don't want to drive home, you can spend the night here. I have two beds. And I was like, no, nope. ah, eh, nope. I'm good. You said I love there you, were honey, spirits but here. Yes. I'll drive two hours home. I appreciate it, though. <laughs> right, because that's when you be sleeping. You know, a scary movie where they start lifting up out the bed. Right. I ain't got time oh, for that. I, I don't no. like to be uplifted in that way. I will be Jesus is my uplifter, a ghost. not a ghost. Yeah, yeah. no, I ain't it's got time no for that. <laughs> Absolute no. <laughs> well, you know, I love Yolanda too. And I think, again, what I think everyone's going to see with this series, Face the Music, is everyone's style and music is so different. So different. And we looked for that when casting for yeah. the show. We wanted something different that they have to bring to the table. But it's so vastly different that right. you really can get into everyone's music and feel like they are their own show almost because and, they have such strong connections and stories. And also some of the artists know how to just, you know, have their turn up music and stuff, but then they know mm. how to turn that off. Right. And they know how to bring real lyrics into their music and talk about emotional things that they've been through in their music. Right. And that's what's beautiful. Like when I heard like Yolande's song, Misunderstood, mm. she actually wants me to shoot her music video. So y'all will that's see that good. within the next couple of months. Um, that song, when I heard it, it gave me chills. And I, I cry. I still cry when I hear yeah, it. Yeah, I relate to it so yeah, much. I still cry when I hear it. Yeah. I think we're going to actually showcase it on the series too, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and she'll be pushing that music out soon if she hasn't already, yeah. the updated one. So make sure you check out Yolande's song. And, and you'll know if you look up Yolande with a Y at the end, you're going to see her because she's one of the only Yolandes in the area of Baltimore. So yeah. trust me. Her um, last name is Toms, if you need it. I don't even know if she wanted me to put her last name out there, but sorry. She's going to be on the show. They're going to see her anyway. So <laughs> it's too late, girl. No right. hiding. But um, Misunderstood is her new song. And it's actually like it's great. definitely a tearjerker. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, maybe I'm just a boo -hooer, but I'm not always a boo -hooer. You say I don't. You say you don't like cheese and I'm crying. I'm what? Like, like I'm a bitch. I'm a oh, bitch. Like, I didn't I get that. I was like, what? At cheese? Everything. Like, I'm hungry. Yeah. Don't be talking about no damn cheese right yeah. now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's how easy it is for me to cry. Yeah, I'm the same way. I think as you get older, you just your emotions just fly crazy. Like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So with production, I want to know what is your least favorite because I've seen you in different modes, and I just don't know what to put my finger on when it comes to what you dislike the most. I would say audio because that's what I got into the least, or or like the least experience. I mean, oh, gotcha, gotcha, I, that's gotcha. the least experience that I have because I started doing music videos when you do. Oh, got another call. I think we have. Yeah, don't mean to cut you off. I think we got a no, phone okay. call coming through. Please Hello. say this is not Mr. and Mrs. Static again because the ghosts are coming. Redeem yourself. I'm All right, caller. You. Hola, como esta? Is hey. this Yolande? <laughs> yes, oh, speaking finally. of the princess. Miss Day Day, we was just talking about you we like were. heavily on this table in the show right now. I don't know if you're watching or not, but... Um, First of all, yes. thank you for calling in. We absolutely, clearly, you just found out that you're our favorite. So. Yeah. We were just <laughs> Sorry, talking about how you were our favorite cast member. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> and before you even say anything, I just wanted to thank you, Yolanda. Seriously, like, while working on this series, I mean, you're one of the cast members, and I'm the producer. And I wasn't expecting to, like, become close to any of the cast members. I thought that maybe it was just going to be, like, a work relationship. Mm. But when you, yeah. like, check up on me and, like, ask me how I'm doing, and I was talking about the other weekend how like you were asking about my sister and stuff it just means a lot yeah. to me when you asked me how i'm doing and i never thought that that was gonna happen so mm -hmm. i really appreciate you yeah oh wow Likewise. very kind hearted very genuine. You all as well like it, i mean it goes both ways definitely like yeah you have the best spirit like, oh yay <laughs> <laughs> like wow well, just as much as y'all bless me i'm telling you or you guys say i bless you guys like you guys bless me as well you have no idea yeah. so I, it goes both ways, definitely. When you run into good people, you know, sometimes yeah. it's just, you know, hard to, to, to not appreciate them. You know what I'm saying? So, right. Well, while we actually ways. have you Thank on you the guys. while we have you on the phone, I kind of I don't think we've ever asked you this before, Yolande, But outside of the production, this is just like friends talking and family talking right now to you. I just want to know, like, what is your favorite part about this series in regards to how the platform is for you like what does this mean to you yeah let's hear it this to me honestly this is life changing 
I'll be very, very honest with you. I mean, you know, as you guys know, I've been going through a lot as far as trying to just chase this, you know, get into the, into the music industry and just go trying to survive with the DMV rent. You know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> so, like, right. It's hard. You know, it's just this, this series has kept me going. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you guys know about the scam with the whole Junei you know, Aiko show yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. So, like, that, yeah. that, this show just kind of gives me hope. It gives me, like, yo, you're on the right track. You almost did. Like, right. don't collapse now. Keep on going. Right. Keep on it. pushing. Absolutely. You know? so you're it, super strong. For me, it's like, keeping me alive <laughs> yeah you've been through a lot and we've showcased so much of what you've been through on this show and for you to still mm -hmm. be kicking and pushing through i mean like i more power to i mean you 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 are strong and as with hell. no tears like she does such an I amazing know. job at not letting us see i know a tear fall which means she's very strong because right. i can't contain oh God, my tears I can't contain my own. Right. You know what? I'm going to put you on the spot yolanda because i love you so much Ew. this is up to you if you want to do this or not but if you would like to, just say yes or no. I want you to do uh -huh. a little acapella for us of Misunderstood, if you can. Any part of the song, because I am getting chills right now. Oh, my sing gosh. It, sing it, sing it, Just girl. thinking about the song. So this is up to you. You don't have to. I don't, I don't want to put you on blast, but I would love. You have an amazing voice. Yes, I would love to hear and have everyone who's watching hear a little clip of that song. Okay. No, no worries. No worries. Definitely. Um, I would love to. So... <laughs> I've been through some things, been through real shit things that will make you lose your head. And people wonder how my heart cries inside, but I act like everything's okay. Yeah, it's not easy to be uncomfortable with what's comfortable to them. <laughs> Ooh, she got me sweating. And the, the, yeah, I'm telling you, I had that song stuck on my head. I was at work the other day listening to it, and um, I put it on my phone. I've been constantly, yes, I've been constantly like getting it stuck, the chorus in my head, right. misunderstood, and I'm just like, yo, for a while there, I was forgetting where I was getting that from because it was just in my playlist, and then I was like, oh my god, that's Yolande the whole time. Like one of the, sec <laughs> one of the second or like third scenes that I ever shot with the show was Yolande in the studio. Yeah. reading this song yeah. and hearing her voice for the first time like in person I was just like oh my yeah. god like <laughs> this show is like the yeah. audience is in for a treat it gives you chills it, 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 it gives it you really goosebumps does. for sure oh, bless your heart um, you are so amazing I'm very Thank happy you. <laughs> that we got you to be a part of this show and I'm very happy that I Definitely. met you Definitely. so do you, you. do you have anything just out of curiosity that's on the top of your mind the back of your mind whatever <laughs> anything that you have for myself or even mo here that you are just curious about or want to ask or even just comments or suggestions i mean well you know what it's so funny you ask that question because i was just today randomly thinking maher the question is for you what made you come up with this concept of okay i just want to get the lifestyles of dmv artists like where did that come from because right. you know in my thoughts you know in the times i've talked with you it just yeah i've never really heard you know you have like a big interest for music or anything so it's like where did you get the idea um well it actually first started when i met trey and i realized he started asking me to do his music videos and we did a couple and i was really interested in his music i thought that he was super talented and then I met yeah. a couple other people that weren't even thinking about doing like a series or anything when I brought the idea to them. But I was mm -hmm. just like, he introduced me to so many other artists and then I met a couple of other people and I was like, wow, there's a lot of talent in the DMV. Definitely. And then there are also some people that uh... are just really bad in the DMV. So it was like, why hasn't this been showcased at all? You know, there are shows like Love and Hip Hop, like that's different. I mean, it's all about ATL and like everywhere, but we don't see anything about the DMV and I don't really right. see that many people like, no. coming up and that's what I want to give the DMV the opportunity for I want to give the, these artists like these really talented people the opportunity to get their name out there a little bit more okay okay that's dope that's yeah. dope and I, I'm telling you like we're so grateful because I agree with you there's so much talent out here like so much yeah absolutely and um, for you to just have the, the idea of not only just capturing their lives trying to get into the music industry but even capturing their personal lives you know what i'm saying like right. that's pretty dope that's pretty dope and i think many people across the nation will really connect with it absolutely i think i got the right people for the show oh no definitely i know you did because yes, everybody you, did. You, did. you know for the most part we really we blend very well like yeah. Bree and i have built a friendship you know recently so that's what i was just telling justin i was like yes. this has become like a family that's what's so yeah. awesome about it 
Can we <laughs> can we really quick? And I don't want to give out too much before the show airs, but I really want to talk about this past weekend what we just filmed a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Because. Uh, I have feelings too, and even though we know it's production, mm -hmm. I can't tell you how I felt afterwards. Was like, oh my god, I almost yeah. felt yeah. bad. So because a lot of the stuff happened off air, right? Which, unfortunately, a lot of what happened yeah. did happen off air. So just briefing you into it, um, mm -hmm. we did film with Yolanda this weekend, and you guys will see a little bit of what that's like when the footage does air. Um, she just recently moved to Baltimore from DC area, so we kind of uncover why she moved to Baltimore and the reason behind it, which was absolutely crazy. Um, but in addition, she decided to take one of her close friends out, um, a guy that she wanted to take out and tell him about, you know, why did she move to Baltimore? And I think literally before we started filming, something came out unexpectedly that wasn't yeah. supposed to and it changed the everything. The cat came out of the bag. Everything right yeah. before the camera started rolling, which yeah. was insane. So when we were walking up to the restaurant to do this scene, it got awkward as hell. Yeah. Yeah, very awkward. Yeah. And I don't know, Yolande, I'm just curious now. So based on the conversation, you mentioned Brie. Uh Bree's uh, Jabri is actually one of our other artists on the show. Um her and Yolande kind of over time build this this friendship, this bond, and it happens mostly obviously off set, off camera. But this weird triangle, if you will, of what happened, happened between Jabria, Yolande, and this guy. Um, yeah. So I won't say any more about it, but I'm just curious, how are things with this guy now? Are you still friends? Did you guys just say, you know what, F it, I can't? Like, what, what happened with that? Well, it's, the answer is heartbreaking. And to be honest, like, you guys actually don't even understand how just talking to you right now just lifts my spirits because I really, I've kind of been like in a dumps about it a little bit um, because of my friend, you know? Right. And, um, I, you know, I was going through the week beating myself up like maybe I did something wrong, maybe I shouldn't have brought it up on camera, you know, just going through my mind like, you know, maybe I'm the one that caused this whole catastrophe, but mm -hmm. then it's like, you know, I've seen some text messages and some things that he said about me and it's, they were foul. It's kind of kind of, huh? They were very they were foul, foul, very foul. Yeah, and it's it's yeah. kind of like, you know, anytime I doubt myself, like you know, Yolanda, it wasn't you. You know, I I look at those messages that, and the things that he's been saying about me, and it's just like, oh, okay, it's <laughs> I'm not tripping. This is what it is. You know, what I'm saying I wasn't tripping for how 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 I handled everything because you know initially in my mind I'm thinking, okay, he just told me this news. Um, how do I handle this and protect his name? Because I don't know if the other cast member is going to say something. Right. So and instantly I was going into protect mode. I got to protect my friend. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather us say something and we make him look good, <laughs> you know, rather than, you know, I don't know what she was going to say. You know what I mean? I, I didn't know the girl very well at the time and I was just going into protect mode and that's kind of why I said something. But looking back, I'm just like, you know, <laughs> it ended our friendship, but you know, I, I, it, it, it's, I don't know. It's kind of heartbreaking. I'm trying to kind of going through it because I just I'm confused about the whole situation. But yeah, I, like and, I well, said, I saw true colors. I needed to see. So right, and it's it's very gut wrenching because like I saw we actually we me and Bo both saw the different. text messages. Yeah, and we saw the things that quote unquote a friend should not be saying about somebody you're very close to. Not only that, it yeah. was like the way that he acted on camera was 100% different from the way right. that he acted off camera. He right. tried yeah. to portray himself, right. knowing that the cameras were rolling, tried to mm -hmm. portray himself as this good guy. And then when mm -hmm. the cameras were not rolling, there was name calling. Right. Yeah, it so was bad. Like, it was like, bad. You're supposed to be this girl's best friend and you're just like degrading her as if she's a piece of dirt. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was it's like really up. hurt because I was just like, you know, in in my mind, whatever opportunity I was getting, I was trying to bring him along so he can, you know, meet people and network and mm -hmm. hopefully get some paid gigs, which he's been getting, you know, just by hanging around me. And that's all I ever wanted was the best for him. So I was just really shocked. Like, just at everything, how, you know, just everything. I just, right. <laughs> I, I guess don't know. some people I'm just don't have the same intentions as you do. Huh? I, I said I guess some people just don't have the same good intentions that you do. No. Yeah. Or that most heart. people yeah. should, you know, like a normal human being. Well, while we have Yulani on the phone, before we let you go, I want you to um, briefly talk about this without giving too much away. But I want people to know, since this is like an exclusive interview, we can give a little bit away. Okay. Talk, Yulande, about what you are planning 
if we can, just shake your head yes or no. What we are planning for one of our bigger scenes coming up that we are going to have a lot of people involved in. The event? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, yes. You're wait, not... wait, are you talking about... Here, I want her to talk about it if you're okay with it because I don't want to give out too much oh, of yeah, the show. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that's okay. I got to check with the producer yeah, sure. here. So, Yolande, talk about you know the upcoming project and how it's going to be a great collaboration and what the, the background of it is for. Are you talking about the... Um... The, event? The, the project that yes, yeah, that you and Novi are working on. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, um, we all actually kind of came up with this great idea, and as you guys know, and without giving too much weight for the show, like we all obviously have experienced um, depression or suicide, um, you know, to one extent or the other, um, and we all kind of collectively felt like, you know, it was a great idea to. Um, hold on, real quick. Sorry. You're fine. You're fine. I'm coming right back in. Um, I'm excited about it. It was. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. It was. Um. So the charity event is basically, you know, um, geared towards depression and suicide awareness. And um, we're basically trying to try to put together just when you know a concert or something, just upliftment for people who do battle with um, depression, which I'm, I'm one of them. That you know I've had that in the past and. Um, just kind of, you know, that's what we're kind of putting together. So it's still in the air as far as details, as far as how we want to go about it. But I know that we all um, share that that common um, story of dealing with somebody who's lost, you know, who's yeah. committed suicide or who battled those thoughts. Um, I believe Justin and Maher, I, I'm sure you guys spoke about it. And if not, mm -hmm. you know, that's what it was. So nobody and I are working on that. And honestly, I think it's going to be a whole, like, group thing it kind of just started where it was like oh uh, you know i'm working on it and i know my and justin you do have like you know let's do this but it sounds like everybody's gonna have a group effort and um, yeah. they're equal parts into making this life i think way bigger than what you have way bigger than what we um expect yeah, it's going to be really dope. It's going to be, like you were mentioning, it's going to be a, a huge event um, that we're in the planning phases for now. Yeah. And we will be inviting people to come out and support. Oh, and, it's going and, to be a huge event. And, yeah. I'm so excited. It's going to be like my favorite event. Yeah, the artists will be form. on the show. The artists will be performing. It will be filmed. Um, the whole event will be filmed. And it's going to also be a very emotional one. So i got to make sure I bring... Everything with me. Clean Kleenex, yeah. some extra shirts. We're going to be dabbing yeah. my face with a shirt. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be like a tearjerker left and right. Because yeah. every artist that has a song to sing is an emotional type of song. Yeah. So, And then yeah. this song that they're putting together for the event mm -hmm. is going to be... I'm even, so excited to see the outcome of it. I can't song. wait. I can't wait. So that's what we have coming up for everybody um, as we're like towards the end of the filming. But Yolande is definitely taking lead with that. And uh, we can't wait to see how it all unfolds. And I'm sure you guys can't either. So. It's going to be amazing. Amazing guys, so yes. tune in to that. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Yes. I, and yeah, like you said, it's, it is gonna be emotional. So yeah. I can already feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, we appreciate you calling in and giving us all the feedback, all the love, everything. We will be seeing you very soon yes. during our next. Oh yeah. Session, we love you, Yolande. <laughs> Definitely love you guys too. I appreciate you. All right. Talk to you Bye, soon. Baby Bye, baby girl. Okay. Bye. So, yes, I'm actually glad that she did call in Me because too. I love you, Londe, and so do I. Um, you guys will see a lot of her everything in this mm. series, her background and everything. So, um, speaking on, you know, production while we're kind of wrapping up towards the end of the interview, yeah. people who are interested, who are going to school for television production or any type of production, even editing, um, and engineering and things of that nature when it comes to the technical side of production, right. what would you say are some things that people just don't know like a forewarning or maybe a suggestion okay. that they just don't understand when it comes to production well there's i don't think i can really give any warnings um because i mean you should do a little bit of your research and stuff as to right. what to do if you want to start in this business but some things maybe that people don't understand like i was saying that i wanted to learn when i was watching reality tv and i didn't, just didn't get it like right. i mean there's a lot that comes into the behind the scenes production say if you're filming somewhere you can't just go into a restaurant and be like hey we're filming here right you have to get release forms everywhere that you sign Every person that's in that area that's not a part of your show, you have to have them sign appearance release forms. Right. You have to get the cast members to sign release forms because you don't want anybody to sue you. <laughs> then, like, sure what I was thinking about the mics, I don't know. A lot of people have asked me this, too. They're like, your audio is, like, really good in yeah. your previews. And it's because we have each individual person on the show right. actually up. mic'd up. They have... Um, 
an individual mic set onto them and taped onto them under their shirts. Mm -hmm. So th those are the cool like behind the scenes things that not many people really understand. But yeah, yeah there's a lot that goes into it and a lot of money. It is a lot of money. <laughs> and it's hard when you're not when there's not like a network helping you fund the show, you know? I mean, if you're just a producer on MTV, the network's gonna give you like $500,000. Me, right. I'm not on a network, so it's kind of money just coming out of my right. pocket. So it's freelance unfortunately, production. we're not yeah. able to film like every day or even every weekend. So we film like every other weekend when I hope that we can, when I have like the amount of money that I can, ha that I can use to rent towards equipment. Right. Um, and then like green screens and stuff those are my favorite part honestly green screens are really green good screens are really fun because that's when everyone opens up and you have and to very uh, fun yeah uh, another thing for that is like you have to light it properly to key the person out in post-production so if right. you if you mess one thing up like half their body is going to be missing so. cut off yes there's, you, there's you know so what i will say about that this is where i talk about people and i have no problem doing it so <laughs> i won't name the name of the show i won't say because i'm not that dirty but it's very similar to a spinoff of the Real Housewives series. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. Anyways, with that series, they'd be doing green screen interviews, and I'd be pissing me off. Are they bad? It piss it's so bad that you can see where when they're moving, everything cuts off. Uh, y'all can call me if y'all need some help with that, because I'm pretty good at green screens. They need a lot of help with that, because let me tell you something. You can, for one, see where half of the actual like background starts to fade yeah. away and gets into the normal background. And then you can see, like I said, if they're like beside a wall, you can see that, that barrier cutting their arm off. Like They move their arm up, and their whole arm is gone. Why did I email an MTV producer once? Because I got really pissed off when watching the show that they messed up something on editing. <laughs> so I emailed them, and I was like, why did I just do that? I'm they're sure never they going to email I would say they probably were like uh, yeah. trash immediately. Nitpicky. Yeah. Yeah. Who is this bastard who's talking? Yeah. I'm the one in Who production. Who allowed that He's to just... go on TV? Like, yeah, no. that's kind of ridiculous. He's probably was upset about that. Yeah, no, but those are things you, if you're in this industry, that's the things you keep an eye on yeah. for. Like, even when you're watching TV shows, I noticed the, one of my favorite shows is Friends, and has always been Friends since I was younger. Yeah. You can watch the little moments where they put a coffee cup down, and two seconds they go back, and, then and, it's, over and it's gone. Or right. it's, Little thing, or it's a different cup. Yeah. Little things like that, I notice, and I'm like, yo, like, I know they noticed this shit. And year. before I was a video editor at my current job, I was a QC inspector, which is quality control. Oh, I do that. So I we do had that. to quality watch, control. like, mm -hmm. videos frame by frame. So when I'm watching a show, I can catch something if it's just two frames off. Right. I'm like, oh. Y'all mess up on that. Y'all should have me on the show and I could have fixed that. You got the eye for it. That's why I don't like to send him anything that I edit because he's going to bash me out and say, ooh, Justin, ooh, no, 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 no. I'm be like, uh-uh, I'm not an editor now. I do not do editing. So yeah. I do it for fun, but I don't do it to be serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'll guarantee you I ain't going to flip nothing out or have an arm cut off. And, yeah, no, that's I like when Devontae's like there. micing somebody up. Devontae that helps with audio on our show. Um, he's like micing somebody up and he tapes it over here, the microphone, and I'm like, Ugh. Yeah, it's showing. you can, can see you it just, hanging like, out your shirt. There. <laughs> really bad. He's like, it's okay if the mic's showing, and I'm no, it's not. No, no, <laughs> move it down, please. Move it down a little bit. <laughs> or over okay, there. so I think we've honestly we've covered a lot in yeah. regards to challenges, but things you also like with production. Yeah. Um, what's coming up? Things you have planned in the future? Your mm. friend Matt had called and asked about that. Um, what do you like to do outside of production if there is anything? Because I know you, and even in your free time, you be <laughs> editing all the time. I do. You need a vacation. I know. So what know, do you like to do when I you're not? I do edit a lot and film a lot on the side outside of the show. Right. But I mean, I'm just like a regular, regular, schmegular dude. Like if I'm... At Say that again. Regular, regular, schmegular. Okay. <laughs> I make sure I didn't. I had to make sure they heard that because that's a new one for me. I There's don't know not you... much to do, like much entertainment, where I live in Chantilly, Virginia. But I mean, you know, I yeah. like to do regular stuff. I like to go to the movies. You know, go to the bar. I have like ten to fifty drinks. You know. I know what he go really to... likes to do. He's not going to say it, but I'm not going to put him on blast. Either. Go to wineries. And... But... No, I know because he always has his phone on him, and I know exactly what he's doing on his phone because he always be around me Shut pulling up pictures of people, the... and I'd be like, "Yo, get off that app." I'm I don't know what stupid. he's talking about. I don't because I'm, I'm a engaged. child of God. Okay. Well, they have Christian mingle apps too. Hello. Well, I'm not Christian. Holy penises and it's sanctified, <laughs> and they put holy water in their bath Goodbye. water. Goodbye. They Goodbye. do that. Anyways, back to what I was saying. <laughs> um, you know, movies. This really happens. Like bowling. I like um paintball, even though it's too damn hot. Too my fucking hot. Yo, okay. I well, mean, that's good though. So I you, love amusement parks. Love roller coasters. As long as you are doing your activities, yeah. I don't want your mind to blow up because when oh, you get oh, it focused, does. it does. Yeah, I'm the same. I barely way. get sleep. 
I know. Because when I'm sleeping, I'm thinking about how I'm like supposed to mm-hmm. edit the show. Mo, or, like, Mo will message me some of the editing clips around like 2 a.m. <laughs> and, and he knows I'll be up. Yeah. I'll be in bed playing games on my phone. I'll be like, oh, okay, let <laughs> me watch games. this real quick. Um, yes. Thought or talking to my, my fiancé that is my new fiancé oh. in Costa Rica. I am not cheating. I am not messing Justin. around. I am faithful. Thank yes, you. yes you for those be. of you who don't know, I actually just got engaged um, like a Woo! month ago. So it's very fresh. And I'm um, single AF, so um, y'all can slide in those yeah, so DMs. everyone who was on me, please go over here to my left and go to him because I ain't got time for y'all shenanigans. I, I got time. Mm-mm. I got I'm time. Keep I got a little time. Okay, so what? speaking of time, I want to do something before we end the show. Why Are you with scared? me on this? Well, don't be scared. Just, just yes, say I'm yes. Let's go along with it. Okay. So those of you who, have, who know Out the Box, you know that we like to pick with people that we bring on the show. Ooh. So we have a little something called Out the Box Interrogation Game. I was just about to say you're going to interrogate me. I'm going to interrogate the hell out of you. Okay, we now got the lights just, in here, too. So yes, um, We got the lights on you on full blast. Whew. So this is a very easy game. But it, for you, it's actually, for me, it's fun. For you, maybe not so much. Okay. Um, oh, because God. you have to answer very fast. You have one minute to answer all these questions. Oh, okay. And it's going to be like boom, 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 boom. So you literally are being interrogated. Okay. Um, okay. And I really want to know some of these answers. Like, some of them are very silly. And some of them are very stupid. But I just want to hear what you have to say because I don't know about Can I you. say no answer? No, you may not. Damn it. You have to say something. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my phone, for those of you who are wondering what I'm doing, and I'm going to pull up my timer because I want to make sure he does not go over a minute because he does not deserve anything over one fucking minute. Okay? What am I, potato? <laughs> a potato? Just a potato? I don't deserve okay. more than a minute? You sure don't. You are wow. over big, honey. Okay. okay. So, we are going to get this started. I'm are you ready? You. Are, you, are you sure? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, some of these are really dumb, but it's okay. Okay. You are they see, quick questions? Is, um, some of them are, some of them are not. Okay. So, Better read them fast. yes. All right. Ready? Yes. Start the timer in three. Ooh, my stomach is growling. Two. I'm so hungry. One. <laughs> go. What is one thing that you have said or done that you wish you could take back? Um, you got to be quick. Shout out to my mom. Okay. Okay. Name one person that inspired you to follow your dreams in the television industry. My dad. Okay. If you could be president for one day, what's one thing you would change? Please make this good. That Trump gets out of this country. (laughs) Okay. You would Trump Trump. One female artist has to go. Which one is it? Rihanna, Beyonce, or Cardi B? Beyonce. Sorry. Me too. I'm sorry. Thank God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. We have 30 seconds. Name an actor whom you had a crush on. Mm. Does Drake count? He, he Drake acted. can be acting. He was on Degrassi. Okay. Name one artist who you think is trash and should hang up the towel in their career. Lil Uzi Vert. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay, 20 seconds. Easy one. At what age did you first have sex and where was it? Let's be like honest. 19 and I don't fucking know. What? I don't remember. In okay. a bed. You have eight seconds. You want to make it more juicy? In a, bed. in a bed. I don't know what bed. Okay. Maybe he had sex in a bed. Doubt it. Okay, so exciting. Um, that was it? That was it. I have three seconds left. Well, you want to add more to it? Well, yeah, well, you give me a okay. run for my money. Okay. Okay. So he has sex in a... You want to? No, yeah. Okay, well, oh, I don't have seconds. a question to ask you, so one, oh, no, two, no, 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 three, no. Um, here we go. No, so I will say this. I like your answers. Okay. I agree with you on Beyonce. Get rid of her ass. You she, know what? Can, can I specify the reason why I say that? I love her singing. I think she's great, but I don't like when she tries to rap. Okay. I, I just love think, her I just don't think like she has a great are... voice, but her rapping, like, I got hot sauce on my back. No, go away. <laughs> Get out. I love Cardi B. I hate hot sauce, first of all, so I wouldn't want that anyways. Love you, Cardi uh, B. Okay. I do. Eventually, I'll get tired of her, too, because yeah. I'll be honest with you. I get tired of people who are overrated and always in my fucking ear. Yeah, absolutely. I can't turn one damn station on on my damn radio without hearing them Like, if you're playing time. Beyonce in your car, like, with oh, her rapping, I'm jumping mm, out. I would jump out, too. I can't do that. Well, her period. But, again... Cardi B will be like that another six months for me. So I hope she come up with some new shit. And, yeah. and don't overplay at stations around here. Don't do that. Because, I just think she's funny. Yeah, I like her personality. She's very yeah. good. She's very good. Okay, well, let's go ahead and drop your social media handles so people who are okay. tuning in can follow you because they need to figure out more about this show that's coming yes, out. Yes, you do. Face the music. It's going to be big. And I want you to be able to share all that with them so they can share more with you and tune in and everything. Okay. So give it so, all to us. Don't laugh at my personal Instagram. It is. Yes. I made it when I was, like, drunk or something. He's crazy. I'm ratchet. When he was Savage, having sex in the bed for the first time. Savage underscore life 69. it again. One more time. <laughs> Savage, S A V A. G-E mm-hmm. underscore life L-I-F-E 69 my professional page which Nasty. I don't have many followers on I just started that recently is Mo M-O underscore visuals mm-hmm. oh sorry two underscores M-O underscore underscore V-I-S 
U A L S. Yeah. You spell visuals. Yes. Yeah. You spell visuals. No and then visuals. my Snapchat. That's where you'll see the funny shit. That's what you'll mm. see what's going on in my life. That is don't touch my hair. Get it? So don't <laughs> I gotta touch. And then M A H E R. My name my hair. My so also give your information for YouTube because yes. that's where all the clips are at right now for Face the Music. So my YouTube is basically the same as my professional Instagram except no underscores. It is M-O space B-I-S-U-A-L-S. Mo Visuals. You look that up and you'll see a picture of the name Face the Music. Mm-hmm. Click on that and you'll see a couple of previews of the show. Um, a couple more than what we just showed. Yes. And, and maybe you'll see more depending on when we pitch the show to networks. Yes, yes. I'm Hopefully you'll see it on TV soon. <laughs> we are. I'm excited to see the um, – maybe you guys won't see this. I'm sorry. But I'm excited to see the, the trailer myself. Oh, I'm already working um, on it. it I is know coming you are. Together. I sent you a couple previews. Mm, you did. did what did you think? I loved it. Is it lit? I loved it. Is it lit? The way it transitions is amazing. That's you all i You had your say. little scene in there at the, at the beginning of the drama scene. It made it, me sad. It, yeah, it's your jerker. Yeah. You made me cry. He does a good job transitioning. So you have the happy moments and the sad moments well, but you. the official trailer is going to be bomb it is going to be Ooh, epic i cannot wait yes. is there anything else mo so i'll mess your name up again mo is there anything <laughs> else that you would like to say before we leave today because we had a very in-depth interview with you about everything production we did it was good well was i good. just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity and having Definitely. me on really and and seriously i'm so excited that like you are helping me out with this project you push me when I don't know what the hell to do. You are so organized when I'm not and you have those contracts there for me when I don't have them. Release forms on deck like in a mm-hmm. in a vanilla, what's it called? Vanilla? Manila. Manila. Vanilla folder. Vanilla, manila. <laughs> a vanilla folder. It tastes the same. Um, But yeah, and I can't wait for you guys to tune into the show. I hope everybody likes it, so stay tuned. I know it's been a long time coming, but we're it wrapping has, up filming soon, so been. be on the lookout. Yes, face the music. 28. My hair. Ahmed. Yeah. Over here. So make sure you follow him online. He has a lot more coming out that you guys are going to be so stoked for. So yes. please follow him and leave him some feedback. Don't please be afraid do. to give him comments or bash please him out because I bash him out all the time. Yeah, he does. In real life. So he go does. ahead and feel free. He loves He calls it. me ugly. <laughs> Bad. I'm just kidding. Anyways, <laughs> it has been a great show. Thank you all for tuning in to the relaunch episode yes. of Out the Box Radio Show. We will be Woo. back every Thursday. Hopefully I'll be back. Um, well... I'm not going to give too much away, but we will be having some artists come on the show to interview as well that's a part of Face the Music. Ooh. So you will get to hear some of their music that we'll play, yes. a little bit of clips from their videos. You guys are going to be like, hold on for this because it's going to be dope. Okay, It's going to be a bumpy ride. Dope. So anyways, that's coming up soon, but every Thursday starting at 7 p.m. on RadioOnFire.com. Also on the Facebook and live stream if you have the free mobile app. It's free, so don't be hesitant to download, download it. it. Download the damn app. I it's have free. It. You have no excuse. No excuse. That's Out the Box Radio Show, where we have no excuses, and we will see you next week.